Hello Angels and Biscuits, CSDL here, and today's video is going to be my February 2021 wrap up. So for February, I only read two books, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, still not sure how to say that, and uh, The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu, which is book two to The Eldest Curses and a Shadowhunters novel. I will do my best to keep both wrap-ups spoiler free. Um, yeah, I will start with Red, White, and Royal Blue. So Red, White, and Royal Blue. This is kind of your enemies to lovers trope kind of story. We have Alex, who is the first son of the first woman president of the United States, and we have Henry, who is the Prince of Wales. Alex causes this, like, PR nightmare, and as a result of this issue he caused, they now have to basically be seen together in public, they have to pretend to be friends, and they have to promote it all over the social media. You know, oh hey look, we're friendly, we're friends. We know international incidents here, that's essentially the goal. And they start off like, you know, it, it is faking it, they're faking it, they don't want to be hanging out, but they have to. And as enemies to lovers trope dictates, they move from enemies to friends to lovers. They end up dating. At first it is in secret and, and you know, shenanigans ensue, political issues, family issues. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, they are both very high profile families. So there's a lot that, you know, tries to get in the way of their relationship. Uh, overall, I was really, really hyped about this book. However, I was also really disappointed. Uh, there are things about it I do like, but there are also things that really uh, kind of hurt the enjoyment for me, I, I suppose. Like, like, okay, we'll start with what I didn't like first, so we can end the wrap up on a, on a happy what I did like note. Uh, so, what I didn't like. The biggest thing was it felt like it was trying too hard to hit all of these different kind of hard political, social uh, topics, societal topics. Um, like, it is a political book. It is focusing on, you know, a president's child and a prince you know, of the crown, uh, so it is going to be political. And there are going to be certain issues that come with telling that story, certain uh, political and societal issues. However, I think the author had has put too many things in here, like it feels almost like box checking rather than telling a certain story. I think there's a lot of things in here you could take out and it wouldn't actually hurt the plot or the story, it wouldn't hurt the progression or or anything. I think that um, maybe that is what should have been, been done here. Uh, because for me, all of this kind of extra stuff takes away from from Alex and Henry's story, which which is the story that is trying to be told, like their relationship and their struggles uh, with their family. I honestly wish we focused a little bit more on Henry's side of things, because a lot of this book is centered around Alex, who the president's son, which I don't know if the author is American or British. I haven't actually done a lot of looking into her, but um, I guess if she was American, it would make more sense why it's so much more focused on the American side. I just, I also personally just think it would be, would have been more interesting to include more of, of the British side of things. But anyway, so it felt a lot more like box checking than telling a story. And, and that really did bother me. They're just, it's like they're trying too hard and the story suffers as a result. So yeah, I feel like that's what happened here. The other thing that really kind of took away from 
the story for me as a whole is is the excessive swearing in the book well which sounds okay okay but okay hear me out i don't mind excessive swearing especially in tv and i think it works in television and film because you have a visual to accompany the language that's going on where in a book you you have to give the reader uh, the the visual you have to describe it it has to be part of the written story right so i don't think excessive swearing works as well so while swearing is is fine and i have no problem with it in books i just think it, excessive swearing takes away from the story you know where i mean a little bit can add to the character's personality and that's fine i don't mind it but i think there's just way too much here. I think everyone but Henry, everyone but the Prince of Wales, swears a lot. And for me, I think that just it's it's distracting and it kind of takes away from what's going on in the book. Like, they could tone it back. Like, the author could could dial it back some. You could still keep the swearing because it sounds like the care it's part of their characters personalities which I don't mind but I think they could tone it back a little and you'd still get the same effect like you you you'd get the message that this is part of their personality traits you know they they have they swear like a sailor you can convey that I think without having to actually incorporate the excessive sailor swearing both of these are honestly just personal uh, you know, my opinions, personal preference. Like I said, I don't, I don't mind swearing at all, but it doesn't translate the same when you're writing it. You know, like when you, when you're writing something for television or film, it's going to be acted out. You have the, the visual, uh, but when you're, when it's just a book, I don't think writing how a char like how you would actually speak translates as well. It does not translate to book the same as it does to TV or film. Um, but like I said, personal preference that it did bother me a bit how excessive it was and the so many different like political, hot button political societal topics being thrown in there. It just felt like you were, it just felt like trying too hard and trying to check x number of boxes versus telling the specific story that you wanted to tell now good things that i liked about this book things that worked for me i really did like alex and henry's relationship i liked the progression that it took how they um connected how they went and like, especially Alex, because he kind of, he has more of a struggle, I, I think, than Henry does in regards to his feelings, where Henry has more of a struggle with his family. But uh, I like how the author kind of uh, showcases their struggles with all of this, with um, coming to terms with not only their relationship, but like can like how they can make this relationship work while also being in this public uh, position like in the public's eye first son prince sort of thing and I think that was done uh, that was done well and I really do love all of the scenes with Henry and Alex where they're alone and they're kind of bonding and all of the emails that they send to each other I thought it was very clever how the author did that, how they would write like um, these little excerpts from people in from history, you know, like fun kind of romantic quotes or just uh, you know, stuff like that. It, but essentially they would quote people and um, talk about them and it was funny and sweet and there, it was it, it was a lot of things but I really liked their email correspondence together and um I mean Alex and Henry I, I loved I loved them as a couple and 
I really wish that the, the other things that did bother me, just I wish that wasn't the case because I was, I was rooting for them the whole time. I love them. I think, I think I like, I like Henry just a smidge more. Overall, I still enjoyed the book, even though there were a couple things I think that weren't executed very well. I think the overall love story, however, was executed pretty well. I think the story of Alex and Henry, I, I enjoyed it. It was sweet and, um, you know, if, if the things that bothered me are not deal breakers for you or you don't think that would bother you, I would still, I'd still recommend giving it a try. It's still, you know, it was still a good story. I still enjoyed the read, even if there were moments where I, I had a struggle. But overall, I still enjoyed it. So the other book from my February TBR is The Lost Book of the White, which is the second book in the Eldest Curses series, which I think is only a duology, but if there's going to be more, I am all for it. Uh, this is like Alec and Magnus's little spin-off series, if you're familiar with the Shadowhunters novels. Uh, I've only read these two, so I, I, I have a lot of catching up to do. I've only watched the show, which I, I love. I love the show. So to, to talk about this book, I am going to talk a little bit about the first book. Uh, so, in the first book, it was Alec and Magnus essentially trying to have a vacation together. I think they had been kind of only openly dating for a short while. They were trying to, you know, have a nice romantic getaway. And that obviously didn't go according to plan. And the antagonist of that book was trying to summon Magnus's father, who was a greater demon. Uh, he is like the strongest of the greater demon, Asmodeus or Asmodeus, however you want to pronounce that. Apparently it has, it varies depending on whatever show you're watching. Um, but yeah, so this antagonist, she was trying to summon Asmodeus to, to Earth. Uh, Magnus and Alec and other shadow hunters had thwarted her plan. Alec took pity on her, basically, and did not turn her over to the Shadowhunter authorities like he was supposed to, and he let her go. And now she is back in this book, once again trying to summon something she shouldn't be summoning. Uh, she is a warlock like Magnus, and uh, this time around, though, her goal is to summon, like, the father of the demons, not Lucifer. It's like a step down from Lucifer. Sam Samael? Sam I think is what, how you'd say that. And, uh, she has this, this blade that she uses to, uh, basically make other warlocks servants of Samael. She does this to an old friend of Magnus's, and they show up at Magnus and Alex, and this book takes place, like, three years after the first one, I think. There is a time skip, and it's a little jarring. I really wish they hadn't done that, but here we are. Uh, so yeah, time skip. Magnus and Alec have, a, have this a little family going. They have adopted a warlock child themselves, and... Uh, then the antagonist from the first book shows up with Magnus's old friend, Ragnar Fell, and um, she stabs Magnus with the blade that, um, you know, turns warlocks into servants. It takes, it takes three stabs, so it's not like he's uh, in trouble just yet, but one stab is trouble. And they also take the Book of the White. And uh, this is what kickstarts the plot of this book. Magnus, Alec, uh, Jace, Clary, Isabel, and Simon take it upon themselves to go and stop her. 
from summoning Samael into the mortal realm or earthly plane, whatever. And uh, it takes them to Shanghai. Most of the most of this book does take place in Shanghai. And like a, a demon realm version of Shanghai. Uh, so that's kind of fun. That's that that is essentially the premise. They are uh, they have to not only fix Magnus or or cure him of this Sven Thorn blade stabbing, and Magnus side plot also wants to free his friend Ragnar from it, and they also then have to stop the summoning of Samael and uh, yeah, lots of lots of big plot stuff going on. So I'll start with like what I didn't quite like or what didn't work for me uh, about this book and then again what I did like uh, far less than the other book. I think the really only thing that I didn't care for was the was the time skip. Um, honestly I wish either there was another book in between the two that explained a little bit more on how Magnus and Alec adopted their warlock son, Max. Um, cause, because if you have to have that information from another book, I think that's a little bit uh, unfair considering these two are supposed to be their own little series. Uh, I think that information should be given in this series. Uh, but really, that, that is my biggest criticism, I guess. I just didn't like how jarring it was going from, you know, the, the first book where they felt like this new couple to this book where they feel like they're an old married couple already, even though they're not married yet. I'm pretty sure they, they plan on it, but it, at, at this point in the series, they, they are not, but they have adopted a adorable sounding warlock baby, and I, 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 I love it. I do love Magnus and Alec as parents. Like, I am living for, I am living for that. That It is adorable. I love it. It's so domestic and cute. And if you give me just a book of Magnus and Alec being the best dads in the world to little Max, yes. But I do wish there was a book in between this one and the Red Scrolls of Magic to just get us to that point. But yeah, so that's kind of the biggest problem that I, I did have with this book. Now, I haven't read any of the other Shadowhunters novels or the Mortal Instruments where we're introduced to like Clary and Jace, Isabel, Simon, all of them. So I don't actually know how they are written. Um, overall, like I have what's in here, but, but that's it. And they aren't the main focus. Like, Alec and Magnus are still kind of the focus of the book, so I don't know. Uh, some of them felt, didn't feel like they were written very well, but again, I don't know if that's just because they aren't supposed to be the main focus, so I don't, I don't really have a good sense of how they are written. Um, it could just be me. Uh, what I did, what I loved, what I loved about the book was obviously I love Alec and Magnus being co-parents. I love them. Uh, I love that domestic side we get to see, especially in the beginning. That's where we see it the most. Um, and, and them just, just being dads and, and magical dads, especially like with Magnus because, you know, they have a warlock child and just the little tricks that they, that they have to um, deal with his, his magic because warlock babies cannot control their magic yet. So there's a lot of accidental magical mishaps and it's, and it's adorable and it's funny. And I would read a book just about that. Like I said, I also liked, uh, the, the demons in this book, like, like Samael himself. And at the end, there's like this little meeting. I won't talk too much about it, but like, the greater demons in Samael kind of, kind of get together, and they have a chat. And I just I love the personalities of these greater demons in Samael. I thought that uh, the 
different shadow hunter cultures was kind of cool. Since we spend most of the book in Shanghai, we get to see how other you know, shadow hunter uh, institutes are run outside of New York and how the downworld, you know, other warlocks, vampires, werewolves, fairies, how they, how their society works outside of, you know, New York as well, uh, the shadow markets and stuff like that. Because we saw the Paris shadow market in the first book, and in this one it's, I, it is quite different, and I, and I like that. I like that each area of the world has kind of their own system and they have their own way of doing things. I mean, the story itself, a little bit predictable and a little bit kind of, uh, I don't, I don't know if generic's the word, but you know, like, oh no, bad guy wants to bring big bad demon into mortal, mortal realm, you know, like it's, it's a story we've seen a lot, but I don't mind. I like, I like that kind of a story. I still am in love with shadow hunters. I love Magnus. I love Alec and any book that has to do with them, I am likely going to love. So I, I would love if, if there's, if there's more than just the two, but yeah, if you have not read The Eldest Curses yet, and you love Magnus and Alec and shadow hunters, give, give it a try because totally worth it especially especially this book if you if you thought you loved magnus and alec before you have not you have not seen them be parents because they are so adorable like their their family is beautiful and i love i love that so much i want a book seriously just want a book of them being dads So this was my February wrap up. If you've read either of these books and you want to talk about them in the comments, feel free to do so. Or if you just want to talk shadow hunters or have a shadow hunters recommendation for me, leave that in the comments as well. And I will see you guys next time.